Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and apologies this is supposed to be a video that I filmed to keep up with my quarantine-a-thon like little mini reviews uh, but Sunday for me was a family day, Fam we had family over um, because the restrictions had eased a bit here so we had a bit of a family dinner and we all watched movies and had fun and I baked cookies so it was a very fun relaxing day but no filming time unfortunately so today is Monday I have a day off and I am definitely going to be filming my wrap up for week two now I didn't get to finish Butterfly Yellow um, which is about a refugee story which was one of my week two prompts uh, which was uh, read a book that with the main characters who are most um, affected by the coronavirus. But I did finish The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce. I chose this one because it seems that the virus is mainly um, very dangerous for elderly people and people with previous medical conditions. Um, so Harold Fry, he's a retiree, he's in his 60s. And the premise of the story is the fact that he gets a letter from a once colleague who used to work at the, the brewery with him, Queenie Hennessy, and she tells him that she is dying from terminal cancer. And what starts out is him writing a letter that he feels is completely inadequate to express everything that she's done for him. Um, he starts walking just to post it to the post box because um, his wife forces him to do, just if he's going to send the letter, just do so. Uh, so he gets out and he starts walking to the post box, but he's not ready to send it yet, so he decides to walk to the next post box, and the next one, and the next one, before he soon realises he's uh, walking beyond the city limits. Now, he lives down in Cornwall, which is the southwest of England, and she is dying in Berwick-upon-Tweed in a hospice in the northeast of England, close to the Scottish border. And so what starts out is him trying to understand all his emotions from that have surfaced from Queenie's letter. Um, it starts out as he begins a pilgrimage to, to see her again, but also to give her hope to keep living. Um, it is really a beautiful story. Like the whole time you're trying to find out what happened 20 years ago. And I must admit for the first like half of the book, I had no idea, but it was just beautiful to try and see Harold work through all this suppressed emotion and all these things that he's endured in his life. And he's like working through that. And it's a really fas fascinating look at someone finally facing um, the mental hardships that they've suffered throughout their life um, and also uh, the fact that he still loves his wife even though they've had a very strained relationship for a very long time um, not just for the last 20 years when 20 years ago something something happened and that's the same time like Queenie left the brewery before that um, when they had their son and Harold was never shown emotion as a child so it was he was trying to understand how to be a good father even though he loved his son beyond anything he ever understood before he wasn't able to un to express that or wasn't couldn't understand how he could express that and I think that kind of feeds into that toxic masculinity in a way where men aren't really allowed to express emotion but also from his own experience where he was really his he was an unwanted child from a turbulent marriage and his mother it was post-war, World War II, England. His father had was suffering himself from mental trauma from the war and his mother um, didn't really want a child. So he was always suffering with that, with that feeling that he had to sink into the background in order to be welcomed anywhere. So the character of Harold is brilliant. I love how you got to slowly peel away the layers and understand the deep emotional depth behind Harold. That was fantastic. But through Harold, you also got to understand different characters. And it did have a dual perspective. So you did go back to Harold's wife, Maureen. And I, hers was a very interesting story because she's always had this ready acceptance in her relationship with Harold she was the one who wanted to be there for him early on in their marriage um, but that quickly turned into highly critical of him she doesn't want to see the failures of her own son nor herself so um, unfortunately Harold becomes a punching bag for all of those like all of those confusing emotions that she is really hard for her to work through so I thought she had a really good character arc where she was 
slowly coming to grips with how her treatment of Harold, like she thinks the marriage is over, but it's she is quite a selfish person, but it's it's not vilifying her because of that. It's making her realize that and realize how she reacts to certain situations and how really Harold reacts and how she's taken advantage of him for a very long time. So it was a really interesting look at not just Harold but also this relationship and Maureen and um, their, their next door neighbour Rex who was lovely. Um, although I have to admit probably about after halfway I kind of guessed what had happened. It There was too many absences in the text to really not see that ending coming. Um, but I think the fact that that kind of morphed into that was a pure goal for Harold in the end and that was why he was walking and not just for Queenie was beautiful. Um, but overall I, th I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I wouldn't say it was brilliant. It did have some really beautiful moments. The one thing I really despised was the part where they had all these people jump in on Harold's pilgrimage and how it was kind of like this society cash grab, money grab, attention grab moment where Harold was doing it for a mental and pure reason where everyone else who were like leeching off of him and it was showing that um, someone who has these pure intentions how this kind of charity these charity events can be done not for the best intentions and so that was really interesting but I really despised <laughs> some of the characters and I think you were supposed to but I really despised some of the characters in there because they never took the time to understand why Harold was doing it and uh, they never took the time to understand him and so by that point I was incredibly protective of Harold um, but overall the characters were fantastic the plot was good a little bit slow in parts but it really made sense for the entire character development. It really is a character heavy novel. Um, but overall, I would rate this probably about three and a half to a four stars. I would recommend it. It is a really lovely book. And also to have the main character in their 60s being a central focus. And for someone who's trying to understand love, life and, you know, their future. This is really beautiful because so often that happens when someone's in their 30s and 40s. So it was such a lovely book to read after The Grapes of Wrath. But um, I, I think I'm more excited to finish off Butterfly Yellow. That one's really compelling for me at the moment. And I can't wait to get started. My book for week three is A Convenient Store Woman, which is a Ch Japanese novel translated into English. It is incredibly small. So I'm very excited to get started on that one. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you all next week and happy reading. Bye.